So I worked for a year with the Cayley community. They're a, a group that do uh, retreats throughout the country, parish missions uh, more specifically. And one of these parish missions was uh, in a place called Berkeley Road, which is in Dublin. And Berkeley Road, um, I'm not sure if it's a very well-known parish in Dublin, I don't know, but it has two major um, facilities there. One is the Matter Hospital, well-known for helping people. The other is Mountjoy Prison, well-known for keeping people inside and keeping society safe. Uh, so there, you know, you've got one, one place which, which is there, I'm not sure, is it, is it a maternity hospital? It's called the Matter, probably, no, no, no. It's for gunshot wounds, because it's in Dublin. Uh, so, so it's the Matter. And then you've got Mount Joy. Okay, now Mount Joy, uh, if you've ever seen it, which I had never seen it beforehand, uh, is a fairly ominous looking building. It's a prison, right? So high walls and uh, towers um, and barbed wire and all this kind of thing and multiple security doors on the way in and a big kind of a ugly looking building really like because it, it, it's fairly close to the center of the city. Uh, but yeah, a fairly foreboding thing. Uh, today's reading, uh, the, the second reading more specifically, uh, St. John is really explicit, as is the Lord, about a particular term which is really politically incorrect and is somewhat uh, uncomfortable to our 21st century ears. St. John writes, I am writing this to you, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father. Point being, sin. Sin exists, sin is real, sin happens. Uh, Jesus then in the gospel, uh, so you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer on the third day rise from the dead and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations. That's the, 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 the summary uh, of the faith that Jesus gives us, you know, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, right? So this, this, this term sin uh, it's real. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of our faith, uh, as is the, the other uh, very politically incorrect term these days, uh, but the, the term for where we go if we choose that we don't want God, right? Hell, okay? These, these things exist. So here we go. Here's the homily on sin and hell. Um, is that nicely set up? <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we just have to be really, really, really careful to get this right. Okay, because um, this is going to be thrown at us if you're ever talking to anyone about the faith and we mention with any kind of conviction that we believe our faith is the true faith uh, or we believe that, that, that Jesus is God, you know, any, any, if we have any kind of conviction at all, the instant reaction of many, many people today, even theologians, uh, even catechists, uh, is that, well, sure, look, at least you, as long as you've got some spirituality and believe in something, sure, at the end of the day, we're all going to heaven anyway, okay? This kind of idea, uh, is, is, it's so prevalent now, it's dangerous. Now, walk with me for a second. Let's imagine we do the same thing. So if, 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 if we don't want sin and hell to exist, imagine applying that same logic to society, just to, you know, civic society there, not, not religious. So crime doesn't exist and prisons don't exist. Crime doesn't exist. Isn't that great? We just fix the world's problems. Crime doesn't exist. All right? That's not fantastic. I think I'm, I'm happier already. Do you know? It, just, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as, 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 crim, as crime or criminals and no such thing as prisons. It's fantastic. But we know that's, that's complete naivety. And you can see effects of all of the above. You can see effects of sin, and you can see prisons, right? So you can see that, that, that there's a need for someone or society as a whole to, to recognize certain things should not be done because they're not good for society. And, and if they are done, you know, there, there are warnings, there are fines, there are that kind of thing. But then there are eventually either after enough offenses or after a big enough offense, there's a place where actually you're not safe for other people in society. We're not, we don't hate you, but you're, you're, you're a danger to yourself and to the public at large. Now, the fact that 
crime exists and the fact that prisons exist, does that mean that we as Irish citizens should live in constant fear of prison? Should I wake up in the morning going, Jeannie, if I don't pay my taxes, I could end up in Mount Joy, which is in Dublin. You know, do, do, I, do, do, do I think, my goodness, if, if, I, if, I, if, I, speed, if I speed, I could get like arrested forever. No, we, we don't live in fear of prison just because prisons exist. You know, like, hell exists, yeah, okay, it exists. Do I live in constant fear that if I don't, and somehow meet God's standards, I'm going to end up there? No. So the fact that these things exist isn't a threat. Now, a uh, little caveat here, it, it, may have been, it may have been so in the past. In fact, it was probably so in the past, especially here in Ireland. Right, there might have been an excessive dwelling on, on, on hell and punishment and so on and so forth. Uh, so we, we have to be careful to try and get this balance right because the, the balance isn't to swing so far to the other side that neither sin nor hell exist. That's spiritual stupidity and naivety. Look at the world. Read the news. Right? We see uh, so often the consequences of people's sin, selfishness. Okay? Uh, interestingly as well, and the Catechism defines sin as enough, when you think of what, what, what's sin, people will sometimes say, oh, it's a way of the Catholic Church to control people. No, that's, that's not how we, so that's surprisingly not how we define sin at all. Um, sin is an offence against reason, truth, and right conscience. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't say it like that there, are, there are these rules the Church has and you broke them, so now God's mad. No, sin is an offence against, against reason, against just, just plain reason. Nothing kind of spiritual here at all. Reason, logic. If I do something which harms my ultimate good, which is what? Heaven. If I do something which damages or risks that, that's a bad thing. If I do something that damages or harms somebody else, that's a bad thing. If I do something that harms or damages myself, that's a, that's, that's a bad thing, okay? They're, they're sins, but again, we're not living in constant fear of sin, but they're real, they exist, okay? So this is good, this is, good, this is necessary to know because this is scriptural, right? Jesus himself speaks about it today. Now, we, immediately, whenever we talk about mercy, you do have to talk about sin and, and vice versa. Whenever you talk about sin, we have to talk about mercy, but we have to keep these two together. If you talk about mercy without sin, then mercy is actually unnecessary because what's mercy for if not for the forgiveness of sin? So if, it's, if God is merciful, God is merciful, God is merciful, God is merciful, and sin doesn't exist, you have spiritual anarchy. Do what you want. Same as if we said, like, there's no such thing as crime. Be free, my friends. Drive on whatever side of the road you want. Okay, those numbers in, written in the red circles, they're just suggestions. You know what I mean? Just be free, man. Just whatever, whatever position your foot wants to go in, usually that one, just, just leave it there, man. Just be free, you know? All these rules. No, no. It's a thing of the past. You know, it's just a, like, that's just craziness. You know? But that's what we do in the spiritual life. Sin doesn't exist. Hell doesn't exist. So what do we think is going to happen? Spiritual anarchy where everyone makes up the rules for themselves, therefore there are no rules, but the reality remains the same. Sin exists and hell exists. We don't live in fear of either, but they're real. Okay, so it's, it's a very important, important balance to maintain. So how does John, we'll say, uh, maintain this balance? I'm writing to you, my children. Okay, so he's not saying, I'm writing to you, infidels. I am writing to you, my children. So therefore, there's this relationship of, of, of love, this father-son, father-daughter relationship. I'm writing to you, my children, to stop you sinning. Okay? Sin hurts you. It's an offense against reason. It's an offense against truth. And it's an offense against right conscience. Stop. It hurts you. To stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just he is the sacrifice who takes our sins away. See how, how beautifully he balances. Sin is real. So is Jesus. 
So is his cross. So is his act of redemption. So we can live in the reality of both. Yes, I, I have sinned. But Jesus is my saviour. I have nothing to fear. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away. And then as Jesus himself says, so you've seen how it is written, the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations. You are witnesses to this. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful, this is how Jesus himself says it, right? Repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all the nations. Sin is real. But we don't live in constant fear of these things. But to deny their existence is spiritual insanity. So today, in this, this Easter joy, our Easter joy is, is rooted in the truth, like, like all of our faith, like the, the Catholic faith. It's rooted in the truth, not in what's popular, not in what everyone thinks or what no one thinks or whatever it may be. It's rooted in simply what God has given us, divine revelation. So the reality, the joyful reality that we live in Easter is rooted in, in the truth, that, that yes, sin exists, but I've been set free from sin. Yes, hell, hell is real, but if I don't want it, if I choose God, then I don't have to worry about it. God wants me in heaven even more than I want to be in heaven because he created me for heaven. So he wants to get me there. The only way I won't get there is if I say, if I say, I don't want you. I don't want you for all eternity. So if I, if I choose him on a daily basis, then I'm pretty confident that I'll choose him on the last day. If I reject him on a daily basis, that's, that's risky territory. So our, our faith, it, it's rooted in hope and joy and truth. But the truth also of the, the flip side, the, the, the other side, that sadness is there, sin is there. But they don't have the last word. Absolutely not. That's why we celebrate Easter for so long. These 50 days of, of celebration and coke. Uh, we, we, we celebrate it because we're set free. And so we thank the good Lord for his mercy, for his love. We thank the Lord that he has set us free from fear that he has set us free from scrupulosity. And we ask for this renewed gift of the freedom of the children of God. Amen.